So we got it up on the bench ready to do some surgery to replace the motor mounts. Over the past couple days I've been uh, spraying all the nuts and bolts with rust breaker and got them all work free. So to get this off I got to remove these, these nuts here. The main motor mount down in there nut is broke. I got to remove these two bolts, these two side bolts, take this motor mount bracket off, release these two on the sides and then try to get this whole piece out. And I got to move the shift lever and the handle out. These two bolts on the bottom here, I was going to just take the whole bracket off, but they act like they don't want to move and I don't want to break any bolts. The whole idea would be to get through this without breaking a bolt. And I'll keep all these bolts and hardware together. So this is 3 8 inch. So take these two long bolts out that hold the bracket. And like I said a minute ago, I have already sprayed all this down and made sure all these bolts were free before I started this. So I'm ready to get it on. So once you take the bolt out and you take the motor mount bolt out from the straight, this bracket comes right off. Right off of both sides. So both nuts and bolts are loose. And you got to make sure you don't lose this rubber bumper piece. This goes in the bottom of the bracket like this. When the whole motor's together, make sure you don't lose or drop that rubber piece. So as you can already see right here, here's our broke motor mount. Now these are the only two that haven't been broke loose yet. And these are going to be iffy. <laughs> That's the scary part right there. I'll let them set a while. They don't have to come off right yet. And next I'll take these two side mount nuts off. <clears throat> that mount feels broke. I already loosened those. Take the shift handle nut out. Washer on the outside and a, <clears throat> a wave tension washer on the inside. I'll put them right back in so I don't lose any of that. I'll remove the control handle. And there's a couple Teflon washers on each side of that. I'll just leave on there. Do the same thing here. Put this back <clears throat> to where we don't lose it. Now in theory, this whole piece should just come right out. There we go. That easy to remove the motor mounts. Now I can get to this little big cockroach in there. Yuck. <laughs> now I can get to this top broke mount right here. You can see it's highly corroded, so we'll take and blast it a little bit and let it soak. <clears throat> get to these two lower ones again. And like, look, this side mount's broke. Both of the motor mounts are in bed, are broke. So if you take a look at this, all three of the upper motor mounts are broke. And they do that over time. They go bad. Which shows a way to revulcanize them back together. These things ain't cheap. Nope, more parts to order. That's why I want to get the whole teardown done before I for our order parts. So we need the rear lower motor mount, two upper side mounts, and an upper center mount. So this lower motor mount's discontinued, no longer made by OMC. So what I did is I went and searched all over the internet. I found this midsection from a freshwater motor out of New York with a good lower motor mount on it. So that's how you get your discontinued parts. I paid 40 bucks for this whole unit, sh shipping and everything. I found one of these, an NOS one on the internet, a guy wanted $99 for, so 
Now I got a whole center section, extra nuts and bolts and everything. So what I'll do is I'll spray all these mounts down with a rust breaker and uh, let it soak about a day and then I'll decide exactly when and how to get all these bolts free. Well, the whole trick is to get this done without breaking the bolt. These two lower mount bolts are in blind holes and uh, I've tapped them to shock them a little. And they'll move back and forth like about a 30 second, but uh, I'm going to keep spraying them. I don't want to put any heat on and get into these side mounts. I might have to remove them and try some heat. Well, my whole goal was to get through this without breaking a nut, but this one just broke off right here, this bolt. So I'll have to remove these two rubber bumpers, and what I'll do is I'll weld a nut on there, make a few temps like that. This is stainless, so I won't be able to drill it out. Maybe I can get enough heat in this side to get this one to come the rest of the way out. So, oh well. Part of the course, working on an old saltwater outboard. We'll get that out and see what we can do. These two rubber side bumpers came off good without any problem. So I'll take them off and I'll try a little heat on this one bolt. Try a little heat and a little penetrating spray. See if it'll cool down and get back under there. A couple of heat cycles. Getting a little further each time, but I don't want to break it off. It acts like it wants to come, but So again a second. Use a little breaker bar so I can go back and forth with it. You can see I can get a little further each time. And that's when I stop when I hear that creaking. Try one more heat cycle. I'd like to be able to get at least one side out cleanly to have that access. I can feel heat all the way up into here already. It's scary because it's coming really good now. Might have got it hot enough. that washer I knew that bowl to be hot as fire I don't want to reach down there in haste and grab it <laughs> all right well not too bad we only got one uh, okay that isn't blind only got one side to try to heat and drill out. Threads look a little boogered up on this. I'll run a tap through that hole and I'll I'll use a new bolt. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a try drilling out. I have some really sharp drill bits. Keep it lubed up. I was thinking about welding a nut on and going the uh, going the welded bolt method, but I can't find any information on whether or not it'll hurt the electronics. And uh, 
I've got enough damage. I don't need to do more. So I've never had any luck drilling stainless and I read up on it and they say you want to go slow so you don't anneal and, and uh, harden the stainless bolt by drilling too fast. Tell you what, it seems to be working. All right. Well, made it through with the first size bit. Now let's see what happens with the second one. Tell you what, I'm getting a fantastic cut. That went there so through it so good it's scary. I'm like a little heat. Hey, hey, hey. If I can salvage enough of the threads. Got it, got it out. Got most of it. Might have boogered up some of the threads. That's uh probably got enough to to hold a motor mount is all I need. Where's my tap? Able to run a motor mount bolt down in there. Beautiful. Alrighty, we got our motor mounts in. So we got the upper side mounts from Brevard Marine. And we got this little little center mount from an automotive mount company. So I got all my bolts pre-prepped, pre-lubed with never seize. You want to make sure you use an aluminum base, never seize. Never use copper on aluminum. So I got all my bolts prepped. Got my motor mounts, we'll start doing a little assembly. I got the midsection and this all sanded and ground down and two coats of a self-etching primer on it. And I'm not sure what color I'm gonna paint it, but I'll decide later. I also ran a tap through all my mounting holes, so my hardware should all go on good. All right, first thing we'll start with is this lower mount. So I'll start one bolt. Slide the other one in. Like I said, everything's prepped with never seize. Stress once again, an aluminum base never seize. All right, lower mounts on. Then we can do these upper mounts. We'll do the same thing. We'll start one bolt. Once you start one bolt, you stab the side of it. Tighten the other bolt in. Same thing, start one bolt. Put my motor mount on. Okay, with these motor mounts, I took all the bolts from that freshwater midsection I had bought. They were in better shape thread-wise and corrosion in this old salt water motor. All right, so those motor mounts are on. Take the little rubber protectors off. Put some never seize on those threads. All right, we'll put our little, we 
Okay, we'll put our little side bumpers back in. Get the nut started. So on these you can start the nut and then slide it into where it locks and then tighten it down with a wrench. Alright, bumpers on, lower motor mount, and side bumpers are on. So I had to make a quick trip to the hardware store to get some metric nuts because this upper motor mount's a Chinese knockoff. I should have known in a generic box with metric threads. But got them, let's put it on. Get a little never seize on the threads. The washer. torque on there all right well we can either fight gravity or use it to our advantage to try to get this all put put in place right. that snapped in Alright, I can't get that center nut on, so what I did is I got a little bit of paper towel stuffed in a socket, the nut, and a washer, and it all greased together. So it'll hold together. Let me see if I can stab it in there now. <laughs> success! Success, success, success! So there's the nut right down in there that we torqued down. So stuck it in the socket with grease, put it over the stud and torqued it down. Alright, the next thing I'll do is I'll start these two little nuts with never seize on them. Or these two bolts into my side clamshells. Now these slide over the side and then interlock and then you tighten them from the top. So what we'll do, we'll get our little bumper piece, make sure it's in there. Fit these over the motor mount from the side. One of our long bolts ready. Alright. Alright, we get all of our lower motor mount pieces lined up with the rubber bumpers and the bottom snubber in. Tighten the two side pieces up. Once our two side bolts are torqued, we can torque the two that go in straight. And once again, never seize on everything. All right, and all we got to do is put nuts and washers on our two side motor mount bolts. Put our shift lever and our tilling handle back on. Like everything else we did today, we'll, we'll never seize it. All right. All right, in the next part, part three, we're gonna go through the lower unit, reseal on the lower unit and water pump replacement. So stay tuned for part three of the Johnson 25 Resurrection.